you for uh, joining uh, the next session of MBL software testing. Uh, this is the uh, unit uh, four, concluding session on software integration, regression testing, automation, and uh, we study more uh, about uh, uh, selecting uh, regression test, test maintenance, regression test uh, build process. Uh, what are the steps that are involved for uh, regression testing build process? Test strategy. Uh, and we will try to recap uh, the session or the unit for all the sessions. So, before that, uh, we just do a quick walkthrough of what we have uh, understood in our earlier session. We understood about the integration test environment, like uh, it could be host based processor or emulator or it is a actual target. So, we have a different sort of a integration like software uh, unit level, software integration level, software uh, to hardware level, and hardware. Uh, to software level. So, likewise, we have a, a integration test environment defined, and also there is a another aspect of a integration test is a system integration test, which involves a system level where we actually we use the real target as well as a, the Rest of the embedded systems surrounding surrounding that also will be a real one. I mean, in terms of pre-production one, where we use actual models or prototype models of the other embedded systems, which are required. For example, if any input is need to be triggered, we are going to trigger with a actual function generator or whatever. We will not use the stubs or any drivers. For driving the values, so that is where the system integration test will take care. And next to that is the actual system test, which is on the production board, and also it is a acceptance uh, test uh, where we deliver the finalized product to the customer with a sampled acceptance uh, as per the specification that is required. So that is a typical V and V aspects for the or in the industry they follow basically. <coughs> Also, we studied about integration from use case perspective. Like, we have a user perspective understanding the embedded system, and a lot of scenarios will be drawn. Each scenario can have multiple or a single test cases. For each test cases, as usual, we will have a test case procedures, scripts, and execution philosophy. And basically, uh, the observed behaviors of the system will be perceived from the user's perspective. That is where the use cases are uh, going to be used. So, if you have a models or architecture written such a way that it can be tested from the use case perspective, it's good to have integration done from the use case perspective. So, what we do is we first describe the users or the actors and describe the scenario, and for each of the scenario, we'll write the Test cases. So it is called as goal driven use cases. And generating the test cases from use cases, uh, basically, there are a lot of uh, uh, tools are available. First, we develop the use cases with the help of uh, tools such as UML, Unified Modeling Language. Basically, it is a modeling language where uh, we predict and uh, model the embedded systems in terms of various diagrams, but for developing the test cases we represent use case diagrams. We will try to understand few examples of use case diagrams today, though it is not part of the scope, but I will just try to explain one or two slides. And typically the use cases so will have a name of the user or the tester or the actor it is called as and a description of what the use case is going to do or the what the user is going to interact, how it is going to interact. Next one is the flow of events, what are the flow of events that user can do and any requirements that is getting addressed, any special requirements that is getting addressed and preconditions for doing that flow. Similarly, post conditions after that scenario is being uh, completed, so likewise we are going to have uh, use cases and accordingly we are going to generate, generate the test cases. You can see an example here figure what we have seen 
which are basic flow of events and alternate flows uh, you can see in a red mark the ones uh, the use case. Here there is a difference uh, this is grounded grounded in the sense it is going to end there end of use case they mark this way uh, typically the flow basic flow surround that the alternate flows will be drawn like alternate flows 1, 2, 3, 4 depends on the type of system that we use for each of these flows we are going to have test cases one or two test cases you can see example one or two one to five test cases are written the test cases can also have multiple uh, flows involved because we need to achieve to reach uh, the path that is why we need to generate so basic uh, uh, steps for generating the test cases involved for each use case generate a full set of uh, use case scenarios for each scenario identify at least one test case and the conditions that will make it execute and uh, for the test case identify the data values that is the objects or the uh, inputs that are going to be used with which you are going to test it. Uh, the data values can also be a condition uh, with which we are going to vary and trigger and uh, the data values also will have a expected output as well as the actual output that is uh, going to be uh, provided when we are going to that is going to be output uh, when we execute the test case. Then uh, after the use case example we had studied about regression testing. Regression testing can be divided as a retesting and regression testing. Uh, retesting is testing again and again. Regression testing is retesting on a previously developed program with the fixes to make sure that uh, the faults that were there before are cleared this time. So that is where regression testing is important. So basically, we use the same test suit. The requirements will be same. Only thing is the code which had earlier bugs have been fixed, and we have a new version of the build on which we are going to re-execute. That is where regression testing is used. Also, it is called as one of the strategy for maintenance testing. We will try to understand what is maintenance testing in today's session. Uh, so the changes that are there in the systems are to be tested with the help of regression test suit. But uh, the chances are that along with the fixed test suit, there could be an impact on the other tests also, which could be failing now, which were passing earlier. So we need to be choosing the regression testing scenarios such a way that the analysis and the impact of the uh, the fixes that are updated on the existing build needs to be redone. So the changes can be of uh, three types. It is on the impacted uh, component itself, uh, specific changes or specific line or a small system, small subsystem, etc. Or a complete test retest of the function, we may have to do it to make sure that regression uh, is taken care. Also, the third type is uh, the coherence or the interaction of the changed components with the adjacent components of the surrounding models, where the impact is there. So all these three areas we need to take care. Regression testing test strategy uh, definitely depending on the number of changes and the kind of changes. So we need to evaluate what are the risks that are going to be evaluated and how we are going to plan and progress the tracking of the embedded systems for regression testing. And uh, sometimes we may have to treat it as a new way of doing the test 
as if the code is uh, being newly developed. So test strategy is to change, uh, identify the or determine the changes, determine, determine the relative importance of the changes and regression, selecting quality characteristics, determining the relative importance of the quality characteristics, determining the relative importance for each change of the quality, characteristics combination and establishing the test techniques which are to be used for regression testing. Regression testing areas are regression mobility, fixing the fault, regression can be for added functionality, regression can be on the same build, same requirement, same specification, but it is on a ported platform or a new platform. Regression can be due to new configuration or after the customization of the software, software has not changed, but it is configured for a different values with a different customized situation, regression and delivery planning that also need to be planned. Regression testing automation is also one of the important areas where we are going to develop a regression test suits under a configuration control. So, uh, automation uh, can be developed over a period so that every time we do not have to re-execute uh, certain uh, bundle of uh, uh, tests manually. So, we can automate those batches as a uh, automated uh, script execution so that uh, regression uh, can go smooth and uh, it is going to be an incremental development. And uh, there is a regression uh, test matrix the relative importance of the changes on the regression the changes could be due to change requests that are occurred during the fixes or new features whatever it is the changes could be due to defects that were identified during the testing and the importance could be 30 to 40 percent 10 to 30 percent based on the type of uh, system that we have. So, that is how the relative importance of uh, regression uh, uh, they will be working out. The basic problems of regression testing is maintenance test suite and cost of retesting. If the feature X is changed, how many test cases we have to execute for that feature or the impacted X because the revised X could impact on the other areas as well. And what test cases I need to remove, what should be added, all these have to be taken care. So, we may have a test suite or the test bench. Or with the batch files, but in that batch files all may not be needed because we are wasting unwanted things. We need to choose, so that is a maintenance, so it is going to cost some effort. And cost of retesting often proportional to product size, not change size. So basically, what sort of a change we have and what is the total size of the product? So that drives the cost of the retesting. Basically, it requires a manual effort uh, for doing the regression at times. Why? Because the changes are too much, and uh, we cannot afford to have the same sort of a automation. Sometimes the changes are very minimal, so entire bunch we don't need to re-execute. We may have to choose or tailor the existing automation uh, aspects. So that is what uh, we have studied about. Uh, the regression testing and uh, the areas and the types of uh, uh, them. Uh, today's session we will try to understand uh, uh, in continuation of the previous one, use case diagram example, I will just brief it. So, this is a typical uh, use case diagram you can see, uh, this diagram is drawn for an elevator system. Uh, you see use case has a actor and this elevator is a functional block. So, there are different uh, scenarios you can see they are all in oval shape, process car calls, move stop the car, open close the door, indicate moving direction, process all calls, indicate car position, 
trigger emergency brake. So all these are different scenarios that are used. and uh, this can call for different test cases. So that is how we are going to have a, a use case with the scenarios, actors and the function blocks and uh, each of the scenarios need to be explained appropriately so that test cases can be drawn easily. So you can see another example I'm not sure if it is clear uh, there is a operator or a user so this is basically a operation of audio player you can see user can do a listening audio or the recording audio this basic functions he is going to act and this listen audio can further have different operations or use cases or scenarios something like uh, power on, play, pause, adjust volume, stop. Similarly, the record audio can also have the stop, etc. So, these scenarios for each of the scenarios after seeing this is easy to draw a test cases, right. So, it is important to have uh, such models having the use cases drawn so that the uh, entire architecture for this operation block, for example can be tested with the help of test cases, so it is easy to test right, so probably we will try to develop a test case uh, as an uh, assignment for this particular uh, use case in the one of the session in the future uh, lab space. So that is how use case diagrams are uh, very useful and will be used for uh, integration testing ok, so basically the main contents of the use case diagrams are use cases itself that is a complete thing with the scenarios then the actors you can see it can have multiple actors also because multiple users or users means does not mean that a actual end user it can be any function block which is calling some function or if there is an input or the triggering condition which can call for these flows, so that is how the uh, actors are defined and the third one being the dependency generalization and association relationship how it is going to be associated with the diagram, so these three aspects or the contents will be there in the use case diagram with the help of this the test cases will be drawn. Okay, so coming to the regression testing, regression test cases, selecting and prioritizing the regression test cases is also one of the important point in the regression testing. So the question is, should we rerun the whole regression test suit? If so, in what order? The order is also very important because we have different test cases flown in different manner. So and the ease of use, the time, the effort and conclusion and the problem areas all this matter in terms of realizing the test we cannot afford to have a high complex testing to start with why right? because we will be spending that in the beginning only too much of a time and later stages it is very difficult to pick up the small ones. So we need to have a balance of both the complexity as well as the simpler ones in order to make it a good order of regression tests. So for this question answer could be something like maybe you do not care uh, if you can rerun everything automatically over lunch break do it that means you have a uh, confidence that that entire bunch can be rerun without any issues without any stoppage for quick time something like 2 to 3 hours then better to go for it for the entire regression uh, suit or the bundle. But Sometimes it is not true, we may have to take care like we have to break up the existing test suit into such a test suit that it is going to map and realize the regression areas where we had issues earlier and that is got resolved in the current execution. And accordingly we need to prioritize the different types of regression test suits and test scenarios. 
so prioritization matters when a very large test suit cannot be executed every day so we cannot have every day operation in terms of test suit execution as a batch in regression testing so we need to prioritize so what is the priority functionality a b c d suppose they are there and we have a, a for each function four test suits for a b c d then we need to prioritize depending on the type of regression that means uh, a can have a high complexity and that functionality is very key and important and uh, we need to prioritize that as a higher one whereas uh, other functionalities like smaller functions or uh, routine functions which doesn't uh, require much attention can be having a low regression testing priority selection matters when test cases are expensive to execute that means if it is going to occupy a special equipment or licenses or any special tools or is going to cost more time then selection is also very important it's not just enough to have prioritization only prioritization and selection both matters for regression test cases because again there is a cost involved effort involved all these sort of a issues complexity and dependency all these matters in terms of regression testing execution test cases are expensive to execute because they require special equipment or long run times or cannot be fully automated so this has been referred in the one of the moro president michael young's book so nicely he has told that selection and prioritization of regression test cases are important okay so another aspect of integration testing or the maintenance for or regression testing is called test case maintenance sorry that there is a spelling mistake okay test case maintenance is another aspect which has to be maintained for a period suppose the product is for 2 years and 50% of time is dedicated for testing definitely we need to have a an allocation and a dedication of this aspect called test case maintenance where the test cases need to be maintained because there is a chance that this test cases have to be revisited upon updation of the software changes in the requirement or customer confidence or multiple platforms etc so all this can be taken care with the help of test case maintenance activity so some maintenance is inevitable if feature x has changed test cases for feature x will require updating so it is not just enough to have a regression to analyzed and used it is also important to have an understanding of what got modified or added or changed and accordingly we need to modify or alter the test case uh, we don't need to have a, a test case started from the scratch because already we have the framework the preconditions and all that elements available we just accordingly we are going to maintain it in terms of updating it some maintenance should be avoided example trivial changes to user interface or file format should not invalidate large for example there is a document there is a small letter like i did some change here test case maintenance of course is a big change but in general i'd say if the name of the signal uh, is mentioned wrongly but test case is so there is no point in doing such maintenance so you can just document and record it somewhere or make a note and when we actually look into that any other impacted changes we can take up this as well so that uh, this can be prioritized and uh, updated when we are going to do it so some sort of a maintenance we can avoid for the heck of doing maintenance we should not be doing it that is the meaning of that test suit should be modular that means 
any dependency we should try to avoid as much so that that can be independently executed. Generating these concrete test cases from test case specifications can help. That means for the concrete test cases we need to have it is also called as a golden test case. So an important word they use in the MBA software testing. If you have this, this is the minimum minimal test case which is used as a golden test, so that this works always. So if there is something stuck, something got issues, and we don't know where to go to do it. So what we do is we'll pick up this golden test tool or test case. We'll try to pass it on and execute so that this is fine. There is some other issue specific to whatever we are trying to address in the other test case. So this will isolate the problems that we have. So the concrete test cases are very important in maintaining the test suit or test cases. That is where the test case maintenance is important. The next one is the regression testing build process. How are we going to have the build process done for the regression testing? You know what is build? Build is basically compilation, linking, and development of the software similarly we have the build process for the test equipment also or the test scenarios or test scripts also again they are going to have a compilation and logically grouping them and keeping it in a proper place and making sure that license and all these are part of the build process and the bullets bullet points but the same is basically inputs in terms of complete build and executable lines of code EOC that is called as the base should be available because without which you cannot do a regression test right. So baseline inputs is one of the important input no change in requirements updated software that means the build has changed we have no change in test plan and test execution strategy it is still same but we are going to do a regression on the updated inputs such as EOC executable lines of code or the build the binary then the last part will be delta review and updates of the incremental updates. So we need to review what got changed what is updated and we are going to do a regression test accordingly. So these are some of the build process we are going to have for the regression testing. So we start with the baseline input and we are going to analyze the changes and we are going to re execute the software with this baseline input. The baseline inputs will be provided through a configuration control basically. Configuration control will be done through various tools such as PVCS dimensions, SVM, JIT, a lot of tools are there. We will study that in the next unit the test management or configuration management. So, one example you can see a diagram here that is been put for regression testing the big process. You can see a repository of old binary and new binary will be added to the analysis binary change analysis. This is basically a process block where basically analysis of what was there before old binary and what is the change that is done on the new binary, binary here means the executable code or the object that is going to be tested against and we are going to do a coverage analysis of the changes that are there so that what are the impacted areas that is being covered and how are you going to test it and for coverage analysis definitely use the old storage old binary coverage or the old whatever we have executed earlier with our earlier test suit so that will be an important input. Then we are going to prioritize the test suits or the regression tests which we are going to start and prioritized list of test cases we are going to come up with list of impacted blocks not covered by existing tests that means so what are the impacted blocks which are not covered with the existing tests that also will come out as an output of the 
test prioritization activity. So this will be a typical uh, uh, test building uh, process of the regression testing. Okay. So having understood all these regression testing, test case maintenance, selection and prioritization of the regression testing. Uh, one question is that if only its environment is changed, we know that the environment could have been changed for the uh, new thing. Uh, is maintenance test is necessary? Answer is yes. Why? Because migration from one platform to another testing, another one testing should repeat the operational test with the new environment. We don't need to uh, execute everything, or we don't need to maintain the testing or the regression testing. Uh, only thing that we need to take care is the operational tests, which are very much coupled with the target platform or the platform changes with the new environment that needs to be uh, considered and taken care. So that is where the regression testing uh, strategy should adhere to. Okay, so with that uh, we end the session of uh, this lecture and we will try to recap this unit of regression and the integration testing. So what are the topics we studied? So we studied about integration testing definition and the types of integration testing uh, we understood. Uh, we also went through system integration, hardware software integration, software software integration, etc. Integration basic steps, <coughs> what are the integration steps uh, that are involved? Types of integration, big bang, bottom up, top down, its advantages and disadvantages we studied. And uh, we also knew about uh, where we are going to use the test drivers, where we are going to have test steps. We can combine both of them based on the complexity and the test strategy that we are going to have. And also integration considerations we studied, what are the steps that we are going to consider in terms of hardware, software, environment, emulators, etc. Integration test strategies and comparison we did with a table like in terms of reusability and availability. Etc. Integration test strategies. How are going to have integration test strategy derived? It could be bottom up, top down mix in terms of hybrid test strategy, in terms of OSS operating systems or scheduler centric. We can use a centralized approach. Also, we can have a protocol or a network sort of a testing with the help of a layered integration testing approach. We can have a database application, embedded application testing can be done with the help of client server integration test approach. We can have a collaboration mechanism where different subsystems are going to be collaborated while doing the integration testing. Then also we understood about integration test environment where how the environment in terms of emulation, formulation, the actual target or host based testing are defined and used. And also we understood about integration from use case perspective, use case diagram example we went, under, we went through and also we understood how test cases can be drawn from the use cases and use case scenarios. And also we understood about generating test cases from use cases, the various steps that are involved for developing the test cases for different use cases and their scenarios. And in the end, we have studied about regression testing, test strategy, and importance of automation. And the last one being the uh, maintenance, test maintenance, and uh, regression test build process. So, all this we studied in the unit 4. Okay, in the next session, we will uh, start the unit 5, which is nothing but test management and defect management. So that will be the last unit of the embedded software testing. After that we are going to have practical sessions, hands on questions and Q&A sessions for the embedded software testing. With that I will conclude this unit 4. <coughs>